Nice. Beautiful club. Hey, hey, it's the official podcast, episode 316, I hope. I could be wrong, but it's a big special episode anyway because we're joined by YouTube's best detective, Coffeezilla, also known as Steven in the real world. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, guys. Big fan of the show and uh, couldn't miss the opportunity. Well, it's an honor to have you here. So let's get down to the brass tacks. Logan Paul, <laughs> is he going to hell? Yes or no? <laughs> oh, no. Well, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on his next response, I guess. I honestly thought when I was like like uh, signing up for the show that it was going to already be out. I was understanding that it was going to probably come out on Monday or something. So it feels a little weird. I was like planning on discussing all of that, but uh, I still didn't want to push the show back a week because Charlie, you and I had already like, you know, tried to do it last week and then we did it, tried to do it this week. So I didn't want to push it back anymore, but I mean, we'll see. Like if he refunds the people, honestly, I'm kind of like, I'm cool with that. I think that's probably enough. Uh, if he just tries to say that he's been planning to like to repair this shitty game all along, like that's not that's not gonna fly. Yeah, that's kind of yeah, what's gonna be a weak well. response. How much? How, how much, much is it going well, to take? Well, hold on, hold yeah. on, hold on, yeah. hold on. I'm not too up to breath with what you guys are talking about, and I'll bet there's a lot of people who aren't either. You guys want to give a quick recap on the whole situation? You're caught up, Andrew, because we talked about it. It's CryptoZoo. That's Logan Paul's thing. Right. We did talk about it on the bonus, though, I think. So you could give it like a a one minute summary again, if you like. I'll give a quick, I give a quick summary. It's like a, it's supposed to be a fun blockchain game that makes you money. It raised millions of dollars, never worked properly. And a year and a half later, after I did a big investigation into it, all of a sudden they're uh, like trying to come back, do some damage control, especially Logan, who is sort of the most public figure in all of this. Um, and he's trying to say like, oh, I never really stopped working on it. His first two responses really kind of focused on me. And it was like, ah, oh, Coffeezilla, he's a bad dude. And, and then that kind of backfired on him. So now he's trying, he deleted one of those responses. I thought he was going to delete both of them, but I think the impulsive episode's still up for some reason. And then now he's trying to make another response to like make things right, which I assume, like I said, I mean, I assume you have to kind of at this point refund the people who invested and lost a ton of money, but we'll see. I mean, I think a lot of this is going to go through lawyers and I think, um, yeah, well, I mean, we'll see what he does. Okay. And that yeah. game, by the way, Andrew, is one that you might actually find very fun. You get to purchase an <gasps> NFT egg and then it can hatch and you get a stock image of an animal. And oh, right. not only that, you can, you can take that stock image and fusion dance it with something breed else. Them. You can breed it into a hybrid animal where it's a photoshopped animal. The instant you said hatches into a stock image of an animal, this all came flooding back to me. Now I remember. I figured that'd be the Winter Soldier moment. I, so know, just, just, also, I just also figured for anyone listening who's not caught up, they might want a yeah. refresher. Yeah. No, no, I think that I think that's good. Yeah. Was so that, talk about. Logan suing you, Stephen, right? Yeah. I think he walked that back. Yeah, he walked that back. Uh, I mean, we had a conversation. It was off the record, but then I got clearance to share some of the details of it, like like the fact that he basically said, you know, he's not going to sue me. Um, there, But yeah, he was basically saying I had defamed his name by just like just saying that he's the only one who did anything wrong, which just wasn't true. I mean, I, I, I literally at the end of the video, I was like, I don't know who you can point more blame at. So then I put it in the hands of the people who lost money. And then like those investors were the ones who were like, yeah, actually everyone's to blame with all this. So the whole thing was built on this strange premise of that I only cared about Logan Paul and this whole thing. And I think uh, Charlie pointed out in some of his response videos, honestly, Charlie's been like, doing some of the response videos for me because uh, like, <laughs> I honestly like after he does a video on it I'm like yeah that's pretty much what I was gonna say too but um, <laughs> but yeah no he was like saying like oh yeah he only cares about me Logan Paul but it's clearly in my videos that was not the case I, I focused a lot on the people who actually stole the majority of the money which was uh Eddie Ibanez and Jake Crypto King so yeah, yeah there's a lot of shady characters in this you can't point to one person but again, you've you've made the claim before, or at least Charlie has, I guess, <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> as a spokesperson. Yeah, yeah that uh, Logan Paul does share a lot of the blame because he he oh, he was the one that hired these people. He he hired the uh, you know the criminals that orchestrated this. Without Maybe a he doubt, didn't and know. 
that they were going to do what they did, but still, you know. But they kind of knew they were shady all along. I mean, you guys know exactly. the like lore of Crypto King is the whole collectibles guru Pokemon guy. And he was embroiled in this massive scandal. So it's just strange that Logan would pick that guy again. Uh, and then Jeff, Jeff Levin, like the arguably the worst manager in the world from my perspective. Um, <laughs> he, he decided he was going to like keep Eddie Ibanez on the project after he knew he faked basically winning a Super Bowl. Like he said he won a Super Bowl <laughs> for the Eagles. And he was told like before they launched it, like this guy's faking the whole thing. And then he still hires them. So like these guys knew, I mean, it's just so strange. So uh, I'm happy with my manager choice of Charlie doing all my spokesman <laughs> work for me. But uh, yeah, no, it, I'm still shocked that like Jeff still has a job with Logan. I don't get it. I, I legitimately do think he keeps Jeff around kind of as like the court jester who also takes punches for him. It's like, oh, coffee never reached out to me. He talked to my illiterate assistant why, manager, Jeff. <laughs> why would you make your court jester your manager? Because it gives him, like, this shield almost. Like, my manager's so fucking dumb, I never even saw these things. <laughs> That's true. Jeff's the strangest character in all of this, honestly. He, like, also went on impulsive uh, with them, but then didn't really say anything. I thought the whole thing was strange. I was like, what does this guy do exactly? Like, if he can't answer a call for Logan, or he can't respond on Logan's behalf, like, what is what exactly is this guy's job? I think, Charlie, maybe you're right. Maybe that is all it is. It's just like, whenever he has a problem, he calls up Jeff to, you know, go go try to solve it. Yeah, poorly. And then it's plausible deniability. Well, I sick the dog Jeff on it, and I can't believe it didn't get done for the millionth <laughs> fucking time. But that would only have, yeah, that would only work for the first two times. And then they're it's, like, why do you keep using Jeff? It's worked for the last five times. Jeff is the one that, like, suggests every bad idea he ever has to him. <laughs> Chad is saying better call Jeff as a reference to Saul, but I have to say Saul Goodman actually got shit done. He Jeff did, doesn't yeah. sound like that kind. No, <laughs> Jeff Jeff is not that kind. Make no mistake. Honest, honestly, I think I think if you're Logan and you're like actually reflecting on this, I think one of the biggest takeaways has to be that your team cannot tell you no. Like they all nobody can tell Logan no on his team. There's nobody who's sort of honest. And I think that's one of the biggest like reasons for this whole failure is Logan goes comes up with this dumb idea of CryptoZoo, which is if you don't know NFTs, like it's a really complicated project actually. Like you have this like cross chain hatching with like ETH and Binance Smart Chain, they have to work together. You have this like yielding idea. You have these like NFTs are becoming new NFTs. It's a very complicated idea. And like they clearly did not have the resources or the know-how or like uh, the, just the infrastructure to make this happen. But there's no one who like Logan goes to with these ideas who just tells him like, Logan, this is a terrible idea. So do you think it's similar to the like Kanye situation where just a bunch of grifters have attached themselves to Kanye, you know, like barnacles on the side of a ship? They just attached themselves to Logan and just pitched him on an, an idea that sounded good to him and he has all the funding. And they just blow smoke up his ass and run away with the money. I think it's more that maybe Logan like curates this list of people. Uh, just like I think Kanye, I think you can tell like it's not just that Kanye, no one's good around Kanye. I think like at a certain point when you have that much power, you can be around whoever you want. So if you're around people who only like kiss your butt, it, it's because you want that to be the case. And so I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it, for example, in the Kanye example, I think Kanye's at fault for not having anyone around Kanye to like, you know, uh, basically call him out. Oh, I, I think agree. it's sort of, the, sort of the same here. I agree, yeah. but I'm just saying at the same time, you can tell that like Milo and Fuentes and shit, they are kind of taking advantage of him, taking his phone to tweet out their fucking own links and such. So I was wondering if it's a similar situation there. I, where so for the yeah, rich guy just wants people to say yes to his face, regardless of if they run away with his money. And but he's not the victim still. So. No, of course he's not the victim. You're just interesting to me how the, I guess these guys surround themselves with the yes men who turn out to kind of con them at the end of it. It's just not easier for them. Yeah, it. it's not. It's not necessarily surprising considering being told yes feels good. <laughs> like I can see, <laughs> I can see why it's the easiest thing. It's the, like the path of least resistance. You don't want to. At the same time, you don't want to surround yourself with people who are constantly shooting down your ideas and stuff, and especially when you've got the YouTuber ego. Um, but it is it is the healthy thing. Like, 
like Cof- coffee is kind of saying like you need people around you that are able to comfortably tell you hey that idea is dog shit that's why we work so well i'm not afraid to shoot down charlie's dumb ideas and vice versa i mean we spent 300 episodes shooting down all my ideas <laughs> <laughs> it's healthy. The, the difference is like your ideas are just not good like it's and you need to know that so we're doing you jackson you need a yeah, no you. man who just reminds you of what you're doing yeah, that's all yeah. i have yeah, i need we're... at least one yes man <laughs> That's not true. I try to be supportive. Whenever you come up with really terrible ideas for podcast names, go. I tell you, yeah. Jackson, I, I'm your yes man. <laughs> I say yes, that's a bad idea. <laughs> I feel like YouTubers especially need no people in their life, though, because yeah. the YouTube audience tends to be super positive, like on the whole, right? They can go turn against you, but you're kind of curating this group of people who just like you, who think all your ideas are great. And you're sort of the leader of that group. Uh, I mean, more or less. So like, I feel like outside your life, it's actually critical. The bigger you get, the more you need people who just will tell you things honestly, because it becomes 100%. harder to get that. Like, I mean, at, like, I have no idea what it's like to be as popular as, uh, you know, Charlie or Logan or all these like guys who've been around a long time. But even just, I've noticed, cause I've, I've kind of like taken a bump recently. And I've noticed the number of people who want to reach out to me who are like entirely positive in their approach has gone, has skyrocketed, right? Because all of a sudden, mm-hmm. I guess I have something to offer them or like I'm, I'm useful to them. So as you grow, you sort of more and more are sort of filtering out all the people who have honest intentions with you. So I think it's yep. actually more critical, like the bigger you are to cultivate like those old friends or people like who do not feel that they have to be a certain way around you and they just like call you out on your bullshit um so no, i feel like this is a pretty straightforward realization though. it's like this is not a profound confucius saying it's like pretty basic realization of how fame works mm-hmm. yeah but it's, especially- it's also it's also job security though uh, like in jeff's case i'm assuming that his entire career is tied up in logan so yeah, he's not going to want to rock the boat and, and cause Logan to be like, hey, I don't want to hang out with this guy anymore, which is in turn yeah, going to lose that. in his job. It's, it's job security to some degree. Yeah, well, abs- in Jeff's case, he would legitimately act like a flashlight for Logan if he needed it. That guy will, he has nowhere <laughs> else to go. Like, I don't even think he has like any qualifications elsewhere. I don't know a ton about Jeff aside from like the surface level stuff, but he is so fucking bad at his job. It's unreal. There's always Kanye. He could switch boats midstream you know just jump on the kanye bandwagon i guess like, yeah, hey, kanye, kanye you want an pick- nft game oh can you imagine the kanye nft oh. crypto zoo Ooh. i can absolutely imagine yeah what the fuck has kanye yeah. been up to lately he oh took a break. <laughs> what has he been up to um like very recently like you've seen the alex jones stuff right like the oh yeah. yes yeah. i mean oh, okay, post okay, alex okay. jones and i think he went on gavin McInnes's show and after that yeah. i've heard nothing like he, he yeah, just disappeared vanished. from the limelight yeah he took a break yeah. i heard like he's knowingly stepping away for a bit good there's only one thing that's gonna save kanye at this point and that's a like an anthony fantano 10 out of 10 album that's the only thing that <laughs> save his career. could be big mm. It's not looking good after his last few albums. I'll just say that. Yeah. It's not yeah, looking yeah. likely. Well, yeah, you never know. He could likely. drop some heat out of nowhere, and then everyone's going to have to be like, well, look, I don't agree with, with the A anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this music speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, music is the only thing that'll make this right. Yeah, you got to separate so, the art from the artist. <laughs> So what happens in Logan Paul's case? Like, uh, all right, so he he gives all the investors back their money. How much money is that, by the way? Do we know? Do we have a figure about it's how much you have to It's super weird. Yeah, so like, all right, you can't just go after like, you can't go off market cap, right? That's like kind of like uh, silly, which is just the number of coins multiplied by the price, right? So at one point, the worth of CryptoZoo supposedly was $2 billion. All right, clearly that's not the case. Um, at the same time, like, how do you judge it? Like, do you just re- refund people based on what they bought at? Because if you do, you're sort of not just repaying people based on like, all right, let's say it started, each coin started at like 10 cents or something, which is not true, but like for the sake of argument, uh, you can't just repay people at 10 cents because some people bought in at the height of the hype, which it might've been like a dollar at that point. So they bought in at a dollar. So are you repaying them at that cost basis? Or are you repaying them like based on like what it originally was worth? It's very confusing. What I can tell you is that it's a lot of money. And the first five days, like the trading volume was 
a hundred million dollars over a hundred million dollars i obviously i don't think that's like the amount people lost in total i think it's probably less and especially since crypto has crashed like you're sort of repaying people with the crypto but the crypto is worth less now so you have to buy it for like less money so all this to say i mean he's probably going to do something where you have to sign up for the refund that's like uh probably the route he's going to go if he does do refunds, which means that only a fraction of people will actually do that. So in that case, I'm thinking he's actually going to be on the hook for one to five million dollars would be my guess would be my honest guess. So that's what I said on stream, because going through like the early days of CryptoZoo, I kept like I was going by like initial like trading, like what people were putting in on day one back when it was like still pretty high and ETH was not in the shitter. I kept coming around like that five to six million dollar ballpark figure where that's probably what he'd need to like fork over in order to make most people that lost it all kind of whole again. So it's something, it's a lot, but it's something that Logan at his size with Prime being yeah. a fucking billion dollar drink company now that he could absolutely afford. I, that seems inconsequential to something like yeah. Logan Paul. Oh, it's, yeah, and it's a huge part for his like, uh, like... The good guy arc hasn't stopped. Like, hey, I'm such a good guy. I'm basically going to fork over. There's just no way to look at handing over $5 million of personal assets as, like, not a good thing. I I mean, I'll be clapping in the back if he actually does it. Uh, So, and I'm the guy who made the whole story. So, um, you know, if he does that, I think it's a good move for himself. But just it's, like, such a huge win for the victims that I just can't help but, you know, applaud it if that's the route he goes. I think one weird thing about crypt- the CryptoZoo story, though, that I encountered is that these guys are like in like hilariously cheap, which kind of casts doubt on the whole idea that he will refund, even though that's the right move here. Um, like I, I came across several instances where Eddie Ibanez and Crypto King are out of the picture, right? So they're, they're, you can't blame them anymore. And Logan and his team are dealing with like these uh, the dev teams. And they just constantly are lowballing people, like, and trying to pay less <laughs> for this disaster. Like, it's like a complete unmitigated disaster. It's a ticking time bomb on your reputation. And they keep lowballing dev teams or, like, not paying them on time or, you know, doing this or that. I mean, I heard, like, I heard a, uh, I won't say who said this, but I heard a rumor that, um, that, like, the first, like, the latest dev team that eventually quit, like, we're talking uh, to Jeff and they were like trying to ballpark, you know, how much is it, it going to cost to finish CryptoZoo? This is before my story came out. And they're like, oh, it's like, you know, something like, I don't know, half a million dollars or $750,000 to finish CryptoZoo. And Jeff reportedly said something to the effect of like, oh, that's too transactional. I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's too transactional. What does that mean? Uh, just exactly the whole thing is transactional like that's like the whole point of it is like you're hiring a dev team that is literally a transaction so instead so they were doing he, it for the love of the sport yeah it so instead sounds like he's he like opened up a business textbook and used the first word he saw on a page <laughs> yeah the supply and demand doesn't make sense i'm gonna have to decline <laughs> the service it's trickle down economics really like so- <laughs> <Trust. laughs> i can't deal so- with the nepotism in the market anymore i'm sorry man. I think that does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I have man. a question. Do any of the customers have like actual legal recourse or does it, is it all hinged on just the reputation and Logan's the goodwill? Win? No, yeah. I mean, I think, I think there is, uh, you know, legal recourse if Logan doesn't go move forward with re- refunds, which again is like why I've been saying like, I, I think this is the best outcome for everybody. Uh, because anytime you get lawyers involved, like they end up eating half the fees anyways. Like I think, you know, there are cases where lawyers are necessary, but in this case, it's so clear what happened. It's so clear, like, what the right move is here. But again, like, I just go back to, you know, when given the chance to fix it before things were a real problem, it's not like Logan and, or at least I'll say Jeff, because Jeff was the one managing this. Jeff was not happy to hand over, like, a pretty reasonable amount of money to fix it at the time. So I don't know if they're going to be willing to hand over more money to fix it now, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, I, that's the one thing that like keeps me doubting that they're going to do the right thing here is I'm just like, you know, historically, at least Jeff was very tight with money in terms of like finishing CryptoZoo. So to pay even more now, even though you, all of us know that like in Logan's brands, uh, brand worth, it would be a steal, like to like pay 5 billion and walk out of this fine. But like, I think they're still probably going to try some shenanigans to like make the deal a little cheaper. I don't know. We'll see. Wait, well, it sounds so, more like an issue of swallowing his pride. 
more than yeah. taking a hit to yeah. his wallet. Hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, but I'm also but, yeah, very so- um, confident in the legal aspect. I mean, you see so many crypto scams that are just so blatantly scammy, like the FTX thing, where what was his name, San Bankman Fried or whatever, he just basically gambled with other people's money, and it's still like up in the air if he's gonna get away with it or not. You know, all of those people are probably never gonna see their money again. So I don't know if Logan oh, is in any Oh, they're for sure not, trouble. though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just let oh. me clear that up for you. They're not mm-hmm. seeing their money again. Uh, they'll see some probably <laughs> pennies on the well, dollar. Sucks. But the money just wasn't there. They Like, Alameda gambled it away. So they just there's mm-hmm. just billions of dollars owed that does not exist. The open question is what's going to happen to Sam Bankman Freed. I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this. Like, I actually want your take on that, y'all's take on this, because it's an interesting, like, moral philosophical conundrum white collar crime compared to like actual like or like like violent crime how do you think it should be sentenced because in someone like sam bankman fried's case he stole billions of dollars and financially like assassinated tons of people but i typically white collar crime is under prosecuted so like i i would say i've talked to a few people who predicted how much he's going to get and the prediction ranges are like 10 to 25 years uh do you think that's that enough very optimistic i you know, think he should I, get life like i like to me i'm like yeah give him life for what he did uh but no, you know I, other I think, people's livelihoods it's called a livelihood for a reason it, it, it's, I it's, your, think, it's your life flood like the amount of money that he stole from people how many billions it was like all of i see all of these tweets from dudes like i put my life savings into this and yeah you can call them all idiots and shit but i genuinely do think that this is going to result in a bunch of fucking suicides like there's so many dudes now who lost all of their money. This guy, exactly. I, I really don't care if you give him the, cop, the capital punishment and put him down, but I, I really don't know if that's even gonna happen. So and the whole I story think, is such a well, capital punishment's not gonna happen. That's definitely not gonna happen. That's but, not I gonna know happen. that's not gonna happen. Yeah. I'm just saying it should ideally, in my opinion. Yeah, you should not just be able to take a uh, hundred thousand dollars from thousands and thousands of people and gamble it away and piss it away and live on a compound and what what was it the Bahamas yeah. in a orgy clan somehow with a bunch of ugly people fucking each other and doing drugs with other people's money i i didn't know about no. the the orgy fa- faction that he was a part of i guess but you didn't yeah. know <laughs> no i didn't know he was part of like an the, orgy the group Steve or Lord? whatever it's yeah it, this has been like disputed uh sam bankman fried says that oh we were just a bunch of boring kids that only like never even had beers for dinner at parties so like he's like oh it's overstated then again, all of them were sort of openly polyamorous, which I think is where the whole uh, kind of stuff, rumor yeah. came from. I, I kind of don't see them doing like actual orgies. I think they probably slept around, I, like just like norm, like like coworker stuff. But uh, I don't, I don't think they were like you know eyes wide shut partying. I, I don't know. <laughs> before, I, think, but I just think it's it's unlikely. But they did have like a $70 million compound in the Bahamas, did they not? That they bought with FTX money? Yeah, but that doesn't instantly equal OG. No, I'm just... Okay, but the company does not need a $70 million like compound in the Bahamas to operate clearly. Yeah. That's well, just money. That's just something they bought with other people's money. To well, the, the part I life. love about that is that like... Sam bragged about having a Toyota Corolla, like, hey, see, I'm cheap, you know? It's like you have yeah. this like, multi-million dollar uh, compound, but all of a sudden you drive a Corolla and everyone thinks you're like this, like uh, the second coming of Warren Buffett or something. Well, that became a meme, the effect of altruism or something, because some YouTuber, I forgot his name, but he basically went over to Sam's place to suck him off and do like this uh, glorifying video on him. Hey, look at this guy. He dresses in pajamas. He drives a really shitty car. He gives away all of his money. He's a vegan. He doesn't eat any animals or animal products. And then, you know, Sam opens his fridge and there's like five cartons of eggs in the fridge. And everyone's like, okay, so this is a lie. It was interesting. And Alameda Research, I think, was led by his girlfriend. I forget her name. Caroline uh, Ellison. Yes, thank you. That lady. So it was just such a bizarre fucking story. And yeah, I don't know if any of those people are ever going to see justice, meaning their money back, which they probably uh, will not. But I also don't think won't. Sam is ever going to see real justice, what he deserves. Maybe he'll serve some time, but. 
he'll definitely serve some time, but it's just a matter of how much. I So I'm on a different thought process than you guys, it seems. So obviously the people are never going to get their money back. That's never in the cards. But oh, Not even cl- not close to what they're owed anyway. Well, yeah, if anything mm-hmm. at all. But Sam Bankman-Fried, I think, is going to be made an example out of 100%. I think they're going to slap the whole book at him for this because this is the first major huge crypto crime that they're going to be tackling in this very scary space. And traditionally, I feel like when there's a new emerging market like crypto has been, when something like this happens, they go extreme. They go insano style on the first one. So I really do think there's a chance that he faces like a life sentence, which he 100% deserves. This happened a while ago, so I forgot kind of the details. But I remember now why people mostly said that he's never going to face any justice is because he was like the second biggest Democrat donor or something. And I don't think that's really... He did both parties, yeah. Well, there's that, and also, even if he just did one of the two parts, who gives a shit? Like, there's no honor among thieves. If When it's useful for them to get rid of loose ends and throw someone under the bus, they're still going to do it. Look at Epstein. He had everyone in his pocket, technically, but he still, quote-unquote, killed himself once they put him in fucking jail and once they had to get rid of that loose end. So I don't think that's going to be like a... I don't think Sam can play that card while he's in prison going, but I gave you money. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's going to save him now because he's he's out of money to give, so they have nothing more to gain from him. Does the government Does hate crypto and NFTs? Are they still scared of it? Uh, no, what they're currently trying to do is make centralized digital currencies from the like official banks. So basically the government realizes, say, hey, we, okay, we can't get rid of crypto, so let's just make our own and ban all the others. That's right. what they're going to do next. They want to be Sam Bankman freed is basically the gist of it. But anyway, yeah. um, Steve, I want to ask you, after maybe Andrew wants to do the ads, I had a question. I do want to do the ads. Perfect. Good. Well, I hope out of all these things that they're cracking down on and regulating and banning, I hope they never ban DraftKings. Because the <laughs> NFL playoff picture is locked in, and the go-to place <laughs> for wild card round action is DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL. To kick off the road to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just $5 to get 200 in free bets instantly. All you have to do is place any NFL bet of your choice, and if it loses, you'll get a free bet back up to $10 as well. Action's so good, why bet NFL playoffs anywhere else? Football is a game. I'm aware of it. I've played NFL Blitz in arcades, and I'm aware of what DraftKings is, and I'll bet all of you out there who do your sports betting are aware of it, and you will know that they are a swanky and swell guy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook (laughs) app and use code OFFICIAL. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL and get 200 in free bre- free bets, not free brets, that'd be insane, free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code OFFICIAL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. You can see the show description for details on that. So while you are having a fun little NFL experience from your own home, you don't want to get on the gridiron. You don't want to get sand and dirt and turf in your eye. That'd be stupid. You can do it from your bed. Take a little nap. Have a little snooze. Pop open your phone from your comfortable mattress. But then you'll say, wait a minute. I'm too comfortable to bet right now because I'm in my Helix Sleep mattress. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand I cannot talk today. So please ignore that and instead focus on how premium this mattress is. It provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. They've got 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models. Or you can get the regular model if you happen to be someone like Sam and you're a multimillionaire but want to look humble. You could say, no, 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 I sleep on the regular mattress. I don't own the luxury (laughs) one. Billionaire. Yeah. (laughs) doesn't matter. You can pick whichever Helix sleep mattress you would like because they have a quiz that will help you find the perfect mattress for you. They also know there's no better way to try something out than by using it in your own home. That's why they will give you a 100 night risk free trial. Get the mattress, put it on the bed frame or the floor or in the garbage, wherever you want, it's up to you. And if you're not a fan of it, you can send it back for a full 
refund. Everyone knows that everyone's unique, and Helix knows that you are unique too, so they will try to make sure that you get the mattress that's right for you. If you don't want to believe me, then why don't you go ahead and try it, you fuck? But do it with our promo code to make sure that you get up to $200 off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. That's going to by going to helixsleep.com slash official. With Helix, better sleep will start now. And we'll get you $200 off of every order and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash official. They really are super comfortable, by the way. Yes. I can attest to that. Yes. I do love my Helix Sleep mattress. I've slept on it, believe mm -hmm. it or not. That's all. That's uh, we only have two. Yeah, Kai, oh. you had you had a question for coffee. Yeah, Steve, do you know about this pig drama that I just found out about yesterday? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I, like I've do. heard of it. I, <laughs> have you done an investigation on it yet? Yeah, no, no. The 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 pearl, the pig drama uh, has not been investigated by me. Like I've had like a hundred people uh, send it to me. I I don't know. To me, I'm like, all right. There seems to be a, I, I think the real criticism is that there's a pattern of behavior with Logan's pets. For those who don't know, I guess Logan had like this pig and when he left to Puerto Rico or something, he gave it to somebody else. And then that person abandoned it. I, I, I don't know how much, cause I don't know the situation of how it was passed on to this other person. I don't know how much I can yeah. comment on like, you know, like how much of a piece of crap Logan is for ab abandoning this animal. He might've like paid them a lot of money and told them to take care of it and like tried to do his due diligence. Yeah, exactly. We just yeah. don't know. Uh, it's mm. terrible though for the pig. And you do see it a lot where people buy, I think in the post, it was pr like that went viral. It was pretty like spot on where basically they said all these people, they always buy these like quote, quote, mini pigs thinking that they're yeah. going to keep them. They grow to be huge because uh, they're often sold as mini pigs. They're not real mini pigs. They're actual pigs. And then they always get rehomed. And anytime you have a rehoming situation, you never know exactly how that's going to go because there's not a lot of people in the market for actual like giant pigs. So yeah, it's a, it's a terrible situation. And, it, and I guess he's dumb for it. But to me, it's like on the scale of things that I care about right now, it's pretty low. I so I care quite a bit when it comes to something like that. I think with Logan Paul's level of wealth and since he's not full time in Puerto Rico, he literally could have just had like uh, a pet sitter take care of the animals while a he little, was away. He, he's so wealthy he, like, he could easily. have an entire team. Like he could have his own private zoo if he wanted to. I don't buy this excuse that oh I was out of the country, I couldn't take care of it anymore. That excuse works for someone like me where like I can't leave my cat alone, but you're rich. Yeah, yeah but, but I, I don't know. Rehoming re a pet isn't necessarily the worst thing as long as you do your due diligence and make sure that the person that's taking on that responsibility is capable. Uh, that well, obviously probably, failed here, but I'm not sure yeah. if that's Logan's fault or not. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, the post was sad, sad the viral post, um, because the pig apparently got rescued by a Gentle company barn. known as The Gentle Barn. Yeah, and they said that the pig was found next to another pig that died. And that the pig that they did manage to save had like an infection of the uterus or something. Unless I'm getting fake news, but they barely no, you, like you pulled it. it back from the brink of death, it seems. Um, I mean, that's fucking yeah, sad. sad. Just, well, do you, want to, do you want to know something sadder? And I haven't seen Logan address it. He had two pigs because Pearl was getting depressed being alone. So he bought another pig. Oh. And there, there isn't Aww. confirmation, but the pig that was dead next to it could have been Pearl's friend, Logan's no. other pig. Oh my god, I didn't, I didn't. I haven't seen anyone that. debunk that, but no one's talking about his second Does pig for some reason. Neuralizer? That's so fucking depressing. It is so fucking depressing. Here, here, here's my question: Like, how do you? I mean, I mean, how do you bounce back from this many scandals in such rapid succession? He's done it before. Oh. You have loyal fans who don't give a shit. I just don't think yeah, he has just... those loyal fans anymore. Yeah, that's what I was going to say too, Charlie. I mean, how you can't do the like, I've changed arc that many times. Uh, mm, like, yeah. it, to me, it works one time. Like you go like, all right, guys, I used to be a bad guy. Usually it, what's funny is like, usually people will uh, like change their look as part of their, ch you know, changed self. Like I, I noticed right around the time of his like change, he grew a beard out. Uh, you know, how do you shave it now and go like, oh, I've changed again, guys. Like, how do you <laughs> do it? Eye patch. 
Oh, I haven't <laughs> earned the idea. right to use my left eye until I've earned your trust Change back. his name to Punish <laughs> Logan. Pull a full yeah, yeah. fucking big boss. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I think it doesn't even go that deep. It doesn't even really matter. It's the same reason that people can buy Blizzard games after they openly slap women in the workplace and why they can watch movies from studios that abuse employees, etc., etc. They want their entertainment more than anything. They want Logan Paul entertaining them more than anything. They don't really care. I don't know really who care. Logan's audience is, though. I but was saying this to Charlie. I thought Logan's audience was, like, tweens and teens and such yeah. and, like girl young girls uh, but it they're not the ones in crypto space or nft space so <laughs> like I, don't, I don't get it <laughs> what if it is i also don't think young girls watch boxing events really so i yeah, also don't know I, who the fuck the audience is i like, yeah, i also just I don't, don't think it's necessarily the same because logan is literally taking <laughs> their money in their fucking face <laughs> and they're just losing everything to him so it's not even just the same as being entertained it's like damn this guy's actually becoming a detriment on my financial well-being because i can't stop trusting him i do think that that's overall the movement of it though like even if his subscribers and his fans took a serious hit from this i think he's got enough that are super loyal to the end that it'll still build back up there's always new people possibly probably. you know there, there are always new viewers always he could be as big as he is now lose half of it and there will still be plenty of people who said i haven't really watched or heard of logan paul who's that i'll check it out I, I think oh, well, I think yeah. they're, like the move is actually they're gonna try to like pivot like they did this with the whole boxing thing like I'm not a YouTuber anymore I'm a boxer part of the idea there is you get a whole fresh new audience who doesn't know any of your past like problems uh, and so they're willing to just kind of like accept you as this new character in their lives so if anything I think there you'll just see another pivot of like oh, I'm th I'm this guy now I mean I don't know what he's gonna be I guess oh. he's the energy drink salesman guy now but like I think there's just gonna be an entrepreneur. Am I thinking of yeah. his brother, or isn't he also in the WWE now? He is in the WWE. Exactly, maybe he'll just incorporate exactly. this into his. Maybe he'll just become a wrestling heel. He'll be like, "Yeah, I killed a pig. What are you gonna do about it, Triple H? Right? <laughs> Come fight me." <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I that think would it's be, depressing to think about, but yeah, not that's unthinkable. Act, that is actually a pretty interesting theory. Because the WWE, like he does really well in the WWE as I understand it. Like he actually is pretty well liked in the space from everything I've seen. So yeah, maybe after all this, if the news reaches them, they just lean into it. Like Vince McMahon's like, look, you got to get out there. We're going to have you murder a small animal on stage to get the crowd against you. And then we're going to have Rey Mysterio hit you with the 619 for vengeance. But then right before the finishing pin, you're going to steal his money in crypto and he'll leave in shame. <laughs> I think you're right. I think the WWE is the angle. I mean, like for Jake, that's what Jake did. I mean. People don't know, but well, or people don't talk about it, I guess. Jake ran arguably more crypto scams and more blatant crypto scams than even Logan did. And he got away with it because he was Mr. Boxing. So like he would run the crypto scams on the side while promoting a boxing fight. But because they're not like directly linked, the people who are angry about the crypto scams were not the same people who were tuning into his boxing fight. And so it just really mm. didn't matter ultimately. Uh, but that's that's why I don't think these things should like be just about you know like youtube drama or youtube like call outs i really think and this has been what i always say on my channel like the government needs to get involved and like oh, actually follow through on what they say their regulations are uh and actually just hold these influencers accountable because i promise you guys that the second someone like logan or jake or any of these influencers spends even like a month in jail the amount of crypto scans is going to drop like a rock. These people are just doing it because they know they can get away with it. Like at the end of the day, they know these internet dramas yeah. won't ultimately affect their careers. So my goal has always been, I don't think it's enough to like, I don't think what I do is enough. I think it's just like the start of bringing attention to it. And then ultimately what I always say is like, you know, it has to be more than a YouTube video. It has to go eventually either to the legal process or to like criminal investigations. So how do you, how does that happen though? How, like surely there's been enough attention right now on it um, for the government to at least be knowledgeable about it or aware of it. So like what happens? Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know if I can comment too much on that. Uh, you know, I don't think I'm allowed to comment on that other than to say that uh, I think people in the past who've, 
like been a part of my videos have eventually gotten arrested uh, okay. because they are looked into. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see so if that's the case. There is here. precedence know. in other cases where the government has cracked down on these kinds of things when they've been made aware of it. Absolutely. Like the case of uh, there was this Instagram in, in, scammer, Jay Mazzini, who was running all this like Bitcoin scam for a while. And then I covered him a few times. I interviewed some of the victims. And then some of those, uh, basically, he ended up getting arrested by uh, law, law enforcement. And he's in jail right now for like, I don't know, mm. like, I think like 10 years or something. So it's happened I before and it could happen again. Generally, if you're trying to get the government's attention, you have to play the angle they care about. Just tell them that Logan Paul may have been owing the government taxes on all of the money that he scammed on the NFT thing. Then they care. That's why the war on drugs started, right? So oh, okay, the he sold IRS like a route? PNG image. Yeah, that he sold a PNG for $2 million. Don't you want your cut IRS? Get them interested. I thought you meant people owed taxes on their drugs they were selling. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so that, I, I, that is that is unironically the duck the drug way, cartels yeah. were making so much fucking money, and the American government was angry, and that's how the war on drugs started. Are you guys aware of the IRS uh like whistleblower awards? No, what's that? Uh, yes. So this is pretty funny. So if you know any rich like crypto scammers, like you can do this uh if you have time and patience. So like basically the IRS and a lot of these law enforcement agencies have these whistleblower things where if you tell them like, hey, this guy has $20 million that he's not reporting um, in like tax money. money. Yeah, yeah, you get like 10% or 20% of whatever they collect. Whoa. It's like uh, a snitch reward. And I remember people used to troll e-girls, like e-thoughts with this. Yeah. Back oh, on right. I remember this. I remember yeah. This. Yeah. We actually Only briefly goes, touched yeah. on this when Belle Delphine was on the show. People would find random... Actually, I don't think OnlyFans was even a thing back then, but, you know, they had their websites and their Patreons and such. And people would report these girls to the IRS saying, hey, she has like 5,000 followers. Has she paid taxes? And get them in trouble and collect rewards. I didn't know you got rewards for it. I remember when that trend was going around. I didn't remember ever getting like money for it. Like, hey, they're not paying their taxes. Where's my cut? It has that. to be over a certain <laughs> amount. That's the key. Like, it's got to be like, I think, I forget what it is. It's like over a million or something. And then also they have to take action on it based on your complaint. So like, I can't go and be like, hey, I think Charlie's not paying his taxes based on nothing, right? Because yeah, ultimately to, my yeah. information didn't lead to the their like finding, right? So if I provide really credible evidence and I'm like, hey, he told me in this like uh, text message that he wasn't paying his taxes, ha ha, screw the IRS. And then they open investi <laughs> an investigation and then and they find that then and they seize like more than a million or whatever then that's where i think that applies i mean um mm -hmm. i just say that because a lot of times the amount of people who like are in these spaces who know people who aren't paying taxes is really large and i really do think it's like scumbag it's like so messed up that you know i pay my taxes a lot of people pay their taxes it's such an insult to the people who do pay their taxes for these like crypto bros to be making tens of millions of dollars and not pay a dime it just like pisses me off I agree. I think it's okay to snitch on someone like Logan Paul, but not on, you know, just the chick selling her nudes. I think that's... Oh, well, it's a totally you know, different scale. You can't get away with oh. it. Yeah, she's yeah. not scamming anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's just yeah, selling her nudes. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. I appreciate the tits, madam, but I have an inkling of suspicion <laughs> you haven't paid the government this month. <laughs> well, it was angry people. It was like, oh, how, how come this fucking whore gets to just show her tits and get away with uh, tax yeah. evasion? Meanwhile, I have to slave away at Wendy's for 12 bucks an hour. That Fair was a enough, huge trend for still, a while. I, I am Twitch. just so, I hate the government so much. I'm just against snitching on principle, but I don't know. The Logan Pauls and the Sam Bankman Freeds of the world, I feel like they are the ones who actually deserve They are the ones the to snitch the against. The they're, stealing, yeah. they're stealing money from hardworking Joes. Like and they and never me, even Kaya. posted their nudes for them. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't even really work. <laughs> They didn't get anything in return for it. At least with all the other stuff, you get like some cool photos. Yeah. I guess we're saying that Sam has to, uh, you know, reveal oh. his portfolio or what? That'd be <laughs> <gross>. Imagine <laughs> no. if he did like, you can't put me in jail. Here's my ass. <laughs> Yo. 
Uh, apparently him and uh, Caroline had a sex tape. I don't know if that's real or not, but that must be the <laughs> wildest no way sex tape. You couldn't put it on the to watch it. That has to be the <laughs> wildest sex tape of all time. Probably like Harry Potter roleplay with the sorting hat, like <laughs> Gryffindor. <laughs> I saw. I don't. Could know, you? I don't remember could you mint it this. as an NFT or something? Could you oh. like? Uh. It, maybe that's how he'd make the money back. That'd be crazy. That would be crazy. Who the fuck was gonna? Ugh, I was gonna say who the fuck would pay for it, but I'm sure he could pay someone for it. Oh, I, absolutely. I, I, uh, you're looking at someone that would pay for it. I, mean. money. I would pay for yeah. it. I would. I'd be like watching an old '80s dark fantasy film. <laughs> That'd be the worst sex tape ever. <laughs> 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 I think it should just go to the whoever lost the most on FTX. Like whoever has the largest balance, like you get like rewards based That's on how such bad an insult. You're, you're, yeah, so if you get like you're the worst off in FTX, you get the sex tape. Like that's your that's the rule. Yeah, oh, that, yeah that'll, like, make, that'll make the whole his... again. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll see some holes. I don't know if it'll make you whole, but <laughs> maybe that's all you need though. <laughs> They could sue for it. I don't want my money back. I just want the sex tape. They both look like <laughs> like Sam and his girlfriend look like crackheads from the Shire. Like I, I don't understand how these two ugly people just found their way to such wealth. It's they, it's really something. He, so well, Sam was literally taking drugs. Like he was like addicted to <laughs> amphetamines. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, he also started rich. He had a good spawn. Kaya. His he literally in that oh, most generous billionaire video is like, well, it was actually quite simple. I started from humble beginnings. I I noticed the discrepancy <laughs> in the trading volume and trading price of Bitcoin where it was 10,000 on the American market, but 11,000 in the Japanese market. So I put a casual $10 million into the yeah. American market for Bitcoin and then sold it on the Japanese market to make a million dollars every weekday. Like he was genuinely just born rich. Yeah, wasn't his parent, weren't both of his parents like Harvard professors or some shit? Compliance it's lawyers, like I don't know about from professors. Zero. Yeah, lawyers, I think they, they were like, yeah, they, I think they were affiliated with Harvard or, or something like that. I want to know their level of involvement. It's kind of unclear um, how much they like knew, but it, it's very strange that <laughs> they like raised this kid. I mean, here's what I'll say. Here's what I say. I don't think if you've seen the corporate structure of FTX, I don't think you could, you would get that if your parents weren't lawyers. You know what That's I mean? True. Like the yeah, it corporate structure of I FTX remember. was this spaghetti mm -hmm. like Alfredo dish where it's just every company has like 12 different subsidiaries and then those are chained to all these others. And it was done in a way to hopefully hide the assets. Like like uh, Sam had $500 million worth of Robinhood shares that he was trying to basically say doesn't belong to the investors. And it was because of how he like structured all these companies that he was going to do that. And that's how he's going to pay for his legal fees. I think they actually seized those now. But um, like, the, like the entire structure was built to protect his money, protect his assets and like keep liability at a low. So I don't think you would know how to do your average person would know how to do that if your parents weren't like these like high powered lawyers. That's, That's true. true. Can you speak of the briefly, I forgot about this, but the guy from Binance, the Binance CEO, whose name I'm blanking on as always, CZ. he kind of, CZ, I don't even know what that stands for. That's but his, like, a, yeah, I can't pronounce his name, but he goes by CZ on Twitter. Yeah, and I think he brought FTX down with like two tweets, did he not? He was like, I'm That's gonna Tara buy Luna. Uh, FTX, and then he said, no, I'm not gonna, never mind. No, and kind of let, no? Terra Luna. That was Terra Luna that happened to, wasn't it? No, no, no. no. He, no I, he's I'm like right. 99% right. sure It did happen CZ with FTX, and... but, but it wasn't, he didn't cause it. Like what happened was this report came out from Coindesk that showed their actual assets. They'd been saying we're backed, we're backed, we're backed. And then their, a report came out basically saying what they genuinely had. The report was terrible because it was basically a bunch of shit coins that, uh, you know, he 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 had printed himself that was backing his entire net worth so or their into all their like liabilities so cz retweeted somebody's article basically pointing this out saying like oh this looks pretty bad and cz just has a lot of followers he's influential so he goes oh you know ba like basically made some tweet basically saying oh i don't know if it's true or not but crazy if true and uh and yeah then that started the panic sell then after that Sam didn't have money, so he reached out to CZ and said, oh, will you buy my company? CZ was like, yeah, psych. You know, like at the, he just like pulled his <laughs> hand away from the deal. Uh, so then it was like, okay, well then after that was reported, 
then the implication is not only is it bad enough to need a bailout, but even the guy who was going to bail you out looked at you and said, oh, this is, I'm not touching this at all with the 10 foot yeah. pole. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. looks even worse. So then, but the truth it is. Gives you that, credibility. Yeah. Yeah. The truth is that the fear wasn't what caused the failure. It was the fact they just didn't have the money. So the fear yeah. like precipitated the failure, but that always was going to happen at one time or another. It was just like, he was the guy, the straw that broke the camel's back or whatever. Yeah, the, well, CZ caused the, it cash flow what issue. is it called? Jeff would know. I'm not Jeff, but is it called the liquid squeeze or something when everybody at the same time tries to pull out their money, but the company does not have liquid assets yeah, in, in, enough to let crisis, everyone pull out the money at the same squeeze. time? Yeah, liquidity that's right. Squeeze, yeah. But, but, but it's important to say there's like liquidity crunches uh, which is what you're describing, where it's like everyone wants their money and you don't have it, but you have the assets somewhere, right? Like you have the mm. assets like, oh, I have, I, I actually need this loan from Charlie back to pay you. But FTX, that wasn't the case. If that was the case, they'd be fine right now. They probably would be out of chapter 11 bankruptcy because that's kind of the point of chapter 11 is it's like a restructuring of your company in order to like basically get, get everything paid back. So it's kind of like a pause in your operations so you can sort everything out. Uh, but the problem with FTX is they just don't have the assets. So that's what you call insolvent, which means not only can you not pay the money now, you can't pay the money ever because you don't have the necessary assets anywhere. Okay. Where does the word transactional come in? That's what I learned <laughs> in business school. Can you put this in transactional terms <laughs> yeah, for us? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah this, this, these $10 billion that FTX owes, it's just too transactional for me. I don't want to do it. I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to pay this back. Oh. Going, briefly going back to uh, the Logan Paul thing, the Logan Paul video, I did watch his response video and one thing that stuck out to me was that he made a claim that you worked in law enforcement or something similar to that? And it and it it's been hanging around in my head. I want to know, like, did that come from anywhere? No, did, was... I keep I keep asking where that came from. I was like, I was like, where did that? This is uh. So I've been waiting to respond. I'm gonna respond like officially on my channel. I'm kind of waiting till he apolo- like till he does his apology. I was gonna respond, and that was gonna be one of the first claims that I'm like, I have no idea if he made this up or if he. He heard from somebody like there has been a history of people. Obviously, a lot of the people I cover on my show don't like me. So some of them post on these like a non boards that like I'm like I ripped them off or like basically they spread these rumors about me that aren't true. So I thought maybe that was the case. Like maybe Logan fell for one of these like silly little like, uh, you know, 4chan yeah. posts or something like that that says like I'm this bad guy. But uh, no, it comes from nowhere. I've never worked for law enforcement, never tried to work for law enforcement. The only thi- like interaction I've had with them is exactly what I told you guys, which is like, yeah. you know, occasionally my investigations will get catch some eyes and then like I'll get asked like, hey, can you hand this over? Like you had this evidence in your video. Where'd you get that? And I'll be like, oh, I'll help, I guess, because I want to see these people go to like, you know, face justice. I put it in my video. So I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give that to you. That led to the only thing that's ever led to is an arrest. So I, I don't know how, like, I think he said, like, the work is not rooted in like truth or like it's speculative. So I literally don't know where this is from. I asked Logan about it. I didn't, I didn't get any responses. Um, and I, I don't know. <laughs> how is that like, even I an own? Like, even if you did work with law enforcement in the past, how does that invalidate He's anything you said? The, so the, his, I don't know if you watched it, Kaya. It was basically just like a character no. assassination attempt. It was just attacks. So his thing was, he tried to work in law enforcement, but they said his uh, research was often not grounded in truth or speculative. Oh. And then he just moved on from it. He didn't <laughs> yeah, prove it no or anything. Yeah, there's no sources. There's no, yeah. like, there's... That sounds made up. Yeah. It, <laughs> it was, was crazy. <laughs> Oh man! It kind of makes you sound that's like too if I cool said, oh, for this guy law tried to stand at a PhD thesis, but he was denied. It's like who gives a fuck? His, his ideas were too <laughs> stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he tried to yeah, go to college, but was deemed an imbecile. So can't trust him. <laughs> I kind of like it though. He's basically saying like you played too too hard and too loose with the uh, with the law. I mean, that kind of makes you sound like a badass, to be honest. Oh, they took your badge. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Is this an action hero movie now? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, dude, I, I would probably talk about that if that were the case. I mean, but it's just like it's just this weird claim where I was like, I have no idea where this is from. I there's a lot in the video that's wrong. I guess I'll end up addressing it, but like there's so much that's messed up. I wouldn't be surprised if actually like Zach Kelling, the guy in the video, like sues him for defamation. Cause like he out of everyone got smoked the worst. 
just based on things that either weren't true or just were completely like defamatory. It's crazy. And that guy's a private figure. So I, I don't know what, what's going to happen with that, but that's, Oh God. Yeah. Wait, that's that, really interesting. That's something that we should absolutely mention. Cause I don't think you guys know this. So in Logan Paul's response video, he's like, well, CoffeeZilla refused to acknowledge that the developer that he was talking to was actually a criminal I hired. And then he puts his criminal history on blast. But that guy had his whole record expunged. He's a private figure. So he straight up fucking docks the guy to his entire audience. It was wild. It, no, like, based, on, based on a 2002 conviction. It was yeah, over yeah. 20 years old. <laughs> Like, I, I literally think, I, like, I actually asked uh, asked Z, or Zach, I guess he's known by, uh, now that Logan doxed him, uh, I asked him about it, and he's like, yeah, like, I had that record expunged, it's from 20 years ago, not only have I tried to get it expunged, he works for, like, some, like, criminal reformation like thing now like he's like totally moved on from that it like doesn't define him anymore so it's not even that i'm the biggest fan of zach or i think he's like this super trustworthy guy but but to be like oh he's a felon is like if 20 years from now somebody was bringing like up like the suicide forest for like logan paul like it's like crazy Ooh. um so that was really weird yeah and then he said that Lo that zach only had three developers but that's factually not true and like, I, I, you know, ended up texting Logan about it. Uh, I didn't get a response about it, but basically there's GitHub proof that they had over 30 contributors to that GitHub. So it's like factually not true. He goes, yeah, he tried to extort me for like a million bucks, but he only had three engineers. It's like, that, that's just verifiably false. That's so, that's so fucking good. I just couldn't get over when I, because I was talking to Mudahar about it and eventually was able to conclude like, yeah, no, this guy had his whole record expunged. Like he, he was like, by, like the straight and narrow now. Logan, for some reason, thought this was a good defense to like make the claim that I only hire criminals so you can't hold me responsible. It was so, <laughs> so weird. It was so wild. It so, yeah, it is very weird. That had me giggling for a minute. Like this dude just got fucking doxxed as part of like Logan's defense strategy which only made him look even more incompetent and negligent crazy well also can't you only expunge your record if i think the crime you've committed was when before you were a legal adult or if the crime is like such a negligible thing like you can't have murder expunged right like it's not an important thing yeah no i think there's definitely levels to it i, I don't know what the policy is from where he lives but yeah the, I, I don't think you could have something as serious as murder expunged even 20 years later yeah, that's that. That's I, I'm not also not a lawyer, but that sounds correct. What I know is that like Zach has spent basically his life since trying to a like expunge it from his record and b get it put off the internet. Like so, he's taken like every pain to get it off these websites to get it all, all off all this stuff, only to have the guy who hired him for this project <laughs> and then didn't pay him <laughs> drag it in front of millions of viewers and like slander him with it. It's just it's wild. How, how as an own as an dick. own for me like like the weirdest thing is as an own against the guy who called him out and then logan made himself look worse like it doesn't yeah. make any sense like you hired him but for, yeah so how did how did logan find out that he was a criminal if it was expunged that's what i kept even this guy was like i have no idea how he found this out he must have like you know paid there's these offshore data brokers who just kind of don't care they'll just sell any information about you so my guess is they did some like super deep uh like probably paid background check on the guy to try to dig up some dirt i i really oh. don't know I, I don't know actually how though because Ooh. what what's at least from what zach was telling me is like he's like you normally would not be able to find this about me um so i, I don't know you the should. truth I don't know where you should come out and claim on someone is claim basically easy. claim basically that uh, Logan is in law enforcement. Do a you know, reverse <laughs> cut. That's how he found out. That would be oh quite maybe the twist. yeah maybe that's how he found out that I used to work for them too or, or tried to work for them or whatever. It is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he worked in the same department. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's in my department. <laughs> and like, it's Logan who said who said it. That's like Logan's quote. He's like, yeah, I didn't like him because his work is often not. <laughs> and I said that yesterday. <laughs> he, his papers arrived on my desk, and I said, well, this is speculative <laughs> transactional nonsense yeah. here. This is going right in the right in the dumpster. That would, that would make it even worse, though, if he ran actual background checks on people and, like, typed them into Google and found out their history and then decided, yeah, I'll work with this guy still. Well, exactly. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole that's the whole thing that makes no sense about this. Uh, mm -hmm. What's also weird, like I guess I ha I guess I'll bring this up probably when I later do a response video, but I think I'll bring it up here too. Like the whole idea of repairing the game is kind of great and all, uh, but the problem is these criminals that you like invited in, they still some of them still have tokens. Like they they sold, but they didn't sell everything. So one of the strange like questions that I have is, okay, let's say your plan is to repair the game and you say you're not going to make any money from it, which I interpret to be like, I'll never sell. I'm just going to like, you know, just altruistically build this thing. Uh, what about the guys and criminals who already stole from the project who still have money, like who still have money in the game? How do you get them out? That's a good question. So he'd have to buy them out too and somehow force them to sell their shit coin. Yeah, but Crypto King has like as, as many wallets as Sam Bankman Fried has subsidiaries. He has like, you know, <laughs> so many, he's like hundreds of wallets. So because I think, I think when I was tracking him, I tracked something like over 40 wallets. And that's just the ones I knew of. Maybe, maybe more than that. I have to go check. But, um, but so he's got, I know he has wallets I don't even know about. I certainly know he has wallets that Logan Paul doesn't know about. And then the same thing is true of Eddie Ibanez. Um, it's not clear that we have all his wallets tracked. So, because they, they were doing shenanigans this whole time where they were buying in secretly while no one knew. So because of that, I think that like the idea of just restarting the game is sort of a non-starter because you just have these giant whales that are going to sell. I mean, presumably when they, when the price goes up. God, can you imagine how poetic that would be? All right, it's coming back guys. <laughs> Put all your money in. Trust me this time. And then bang happens again. <laughs> uh, it doesn't make it. Yeah, it's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. Um, it's really weird. Also, I think I saw like lo the wallet that I, I think is Logan. It's a I, I have it tied to Logan. Um, and it was like rebuying into CryptoZoo like right before he announced that he was coming back. So like he was like trying to pump his own price. Which oh, I thought mm -hmm. that God. was really interesting. Like I was like, oh, that's because there was a lot reported about like, oh, crypto zoo's way up since. So it's like a bullish indicator, like, hey, people really believe this. But I mean, from what I could tell, it was like a lot of just like Logan and Co. that was buying in. God, that's so sad. Ugh. Sounds like a yeah, scam. We'll, we'll they see, believe we'll in the project. People, we'll see if people buy in. I mean, I just think I think if I'm Logan, I'm like, look, this is my chance to extricate myself from the situation. Let's just pay these people back and let's yeah. never mention the word crypto zoo again. Because this is gonna become like a <laughs> multi-year albatross for him where he has to constantly answer for the failures of crypto zoo. Like I, I just find it hard to believe that CryptoZoo is going to be this huge success since. So why it, would eager. you? It's going to be eager. Yeah, why would you launch you it again? It like, I don't know, man. It's so weird. By the way, Chad has given us a last minute update on the pick situation. Logan claims he gave the pick away to a ranch for 10 months. And after the 10 months, the ranch, uh, sorry, the owner of the ranch sold the ranch. I guess the entire ranch. And he says after that, I don't know what happens. But he feels sorry. An incredibly okay. heartbreaking situation. I had Pearl for two years. I'm beyond thankful to the gentle barn for taking her in and will do whatever I need to aid in Pearl's care. Hopefully That's he's telling the truth. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was yeah, saying. We don't know the full situation. You never yeah, know we the full know. situation mm -hmm. in cases like that. That's why I didn't like jump on it when it came out. Because I was like, yeah, I don't know. There could be a good explanation. It, he, it could be yeah. a total lie. We don't actually know. I just still think in his case, you could have, it, like, if you really didn't want to lose Pearl, which the email seems to indicate was the case, he absolutely could have just had, like, full-time pet sitters staying there because he's not full-time Puerto Rico. In fact, I think at this point he spends more yeah. time in the States than Puerto Rico. Like, he could have actually just had someone there when he was away. Charlie, but maybe if, he if, thought it would have been healthier or, or more caring for um, Pearl if she went to an actual ranch for pigs. Uh, I, I don't I don't really mm. buy that. I, I, Is I there don't such a thing? So. I will Maybe, say, I Charlie, if you can prove that Logan spends more time in the States than the Puerto Rico, you can probably whistleblow him to the IRS. <laughs> 
because to be like <laughs> technically qualified for his tax loophole, he technically has to spend 50% of time or more in Puerto Rico. So if like, actually that's a true claim, <laughs> ironically, you could probably report him for tax fraud because yeah, you actually, per like the Puerto Rico, at least the last time I checked, per their like whole rules, you have to spend 51% of time to make it your primary occupancy. Uh, that's why he's like always in Puerto Rico actually. So yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but if so, that's pretty funny. I, I'm just exaggerating. It just feels like he spends more time here because he's always doing these projects and these that's collaborative the efforts. Is. Yeah. I don't know. Big if true. Big if true. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to, I'll keep my eye on that one. This will be my coffee's a tier investigation. I'll just have like that Twitter account that tracked Elon Musk's jet for, for yes! Logan Paul. Yes. <laughs> Tracking Logan Paul. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's a good idea. So I've got, I've got a last question for you, Stephen. Sure, um, go ahead. Have you ever felt, have you ever felt like your life has ever been in danger because of an investigation <laughs> you've been conducting or because of what you've uncovered? Bro, let me tell you something that happened to me literally in the last two weeks that's crazy. Crazy. I think I... Okay. I don't know if I mentioned it to Charlie, just like behind the scenes, but... All right. Never normally, but a situation cropped up with this Logan Paul thing. So uh, <laughs> I, I haven't talked about this publicly yet. This will be the first time. Basically, in my story, in my CryptoZoo story... There was this billionaire that I mentioned. I mentioned multiple billionaires, but I won't mention which one. But like, uh, I mentioned one of them and it was very brief. It was like, hey, something, something happened with this billionaire, sort of related to CryptoZoo. They weren't a big part of the story. After that, I get contacted by this uh, basically billionaire crisis manager for this guy who is extremely upset that I made this video, these claims in my video, even though they were backed up by evidence, and decides that, and proceeds to tell me that they work for Russian oligarchs, Saudis, <laughs> and billionaires, and that, that literally, that what they said is, I'm the last call. And they told me, you've come up on my radar, this is an exploding situation, like this is like a ticking time bomb, and I need to get this like settled. Basically, you got some facts wrong. And I was like, well, what facts? And they refused to tell me. They go, <laughs> I won't tell you. I have secret documents on my hard drive, which I need to fly to see you. I need, like, I can't tell you over the phone. I cannot tell you over a call. I need to go to your city and they name the city <laughs> I live in. And so I, I, need, I'm, I bought first class flights to your city. And I'm coming to meet with you. Flex. <laughs> what, what, is, on, what, is, yeah, the, what does the first class tickets have to do with it? <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it's just I'll be drinking a rum and coke on I'm the like, plane and listening to my I'll music. I'll arrive in a limo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're, they're, like, they're like, we have to meet and I'm going to put you on the call like with these people and we're going to sort this out. And basically, I make journalists careers and I also have ruined them. And basically, like, uh, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. That Ooh, is the is first maker. and only time that I've ever been like truly scared of someone's intentions because like, dude, if you work for, for Russian oligarchs and if you work for Saudis, what? I mean, I looked up their history. It does seem to be like true that they work for bad people. Oh, okay. They're legit. I'm like, oh. holy, like, so I ended up. I was, I was guessing it was like a crazy homeless man that had just got in your number or something. <laughs> yeah, no, like this, is like, this, is a re this is a real person, real person, real cr wow. credentials. And I basically, last minute, they're like getting on the flight and I canceled on them. And I was like, actually, this is a bad idea. I'm not doing this. No way. Because uh, I, I was literally, I was, I was like freaked out for my life. I was going to have to bring like a, you know, like a, like try to hire Bodyguard. personal security, but I don't know any personal security. So I was going to like hire my buddy from high school, which like, what is he going to do? <laughs> Nothing. So, um, so, so that was the, I, there's like no way of knowing if there was like a credible personal threat, but it was like, they could have easily tailed me. There's no good explanation for why they wanted to meet in person as opposed to just like sending me an email or like, and that's ultimately what I told him. I was like, look, if you have real evidence, send me an email, uh, do it in writing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play this like game where you yeah. threaten me over the phone, Espionage. but we have to meet in person. So that was like the first time that I was actually like frightened. And so because of that, funny enough, when like Logan threatened to sue me, it was sort of like the second 
most worrying thing that had happened that month. So I was actually kind of chilling. I was like, people called me, they go, oh, I heard like Logan might do this. And I was like, dude, that is my, the least of my concerns right now. I'm not worried about Logan Paul. Yeah, you were, you, at, at that time you were hiding under your bed, afraid of like an assassin. Yes, was, dude, it was horrible. I was like, I was like scared of this other person. So no, actually that was like kind of not, yeah. uh, not the, my, the highest on my priority list. So uh, that's the only time, I mean, most of the time the people who are like doing it, it's pretty obvious uh, that they're, you know, just kind of doing it to try to make you shut up. And it's, it's usually just financial threats, which I don't know. I, I don't, I don't have a lot. So it's like, even if they go after me, it's like, all right, fine. Um, whatever. <laughs> Take it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, so that's basically my only real story, I guess. Oh, actually there's one more story. I guess this is kind of weird. When I was, I no longer live at this place, but at one point, somebody like went in my backyard. Like, I don't know if it was associated with the channel, but like, we just like, we're like having dinner and we saw a silhouette in the, in the blinds and like somebody was in our backyard. So that was pretty weird. Like, just like, we don't know if they were like go coming after us. We don't know if it was like a, like a hobo, a bum. Um, but like when you're in this situation, you kind of assume the worst, but after that, like, I don't know, that's like a year past. So I'm not really worried about that anymore. It was probably just Jeff. He got lost looking for Logan somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Pokemon Go. Yeah, so that's, that's my, my exciting stories. That's all I have. I mean, that, 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 uh, that international espionage thing was pretty exciting. I'll give you that one. I'd be, I'd be terrified if that happened to me. Yeah, what's, to what's buy me wait. off. What's weird like, about what's it? What's your budget? You can buy my <laughs> silence. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good plan, actually. Is it too late for that, Steven? You could try and extort them for a little money. I'm sure that won't go bad. No, I'm not going to extort No. The weird thing is, too, like, they, they, it, that kind of was this weird implication. I don't know if this was bait or something. They said, like, they did, we did have an over-the-phone call where they said, like, we can't share this information. But they did say something to the effect of, you know, oh, uh, basically... I don't know if you even have the resources to tell this new story we want to give you. Like, we want to give you this new story as a part of how you messed everything up. So <laughs> as a part of giving you this new story, I don't even know if you have the resources to do this story justice. So maybe you need some help. Maybe you don't have the resources. Maybe you need some help with those resources. I didn't know if that was like their attempt at a bribe because I was like, uh, like, I was just like, no, I like, I think, I think I'm good, you know, um, but I think maybe, maybe no, that was like, been like No, I don't have the resources. I need, I need $10 million of dollars. Of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Unmarked bills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. They can afford it if they're bragging about first class flights and stuff. You should have yeah. That's such a weird brag, by the way. They should have paid for your first, cl uh, first class flights to them. Treated you nicely. No, I'm Would not flying on that plane, should be bragging yeah. about private <laughs> flights. Private jets. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. It's a billionaire. Would do you all think well, flights are would you, cool? Like, would you get I on that plane? Think... No, no, I wouldn't. But yeah. also, like, dude, flying to me sucks. I hate flying. Like, I'm even terrified. Yeah. I, I've never flown, like, private. But um, I just imagine, like, and I've never flown first class either. But it's still the same thing. You're stuck in this tube uh, for hours. There still are a lot of people around you. It's just less people, I guess, the more you pay. I just don't think, I think they've tried to make it a cool experience, like with the marketing. But to me, there's like sort of, of nothing. Us? Are you scared of flying? Are you trying to rationalize being scared of flying? Oh, dude, I hate flying. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, go. Definitely. That's definitely okay, yeah, true. We understand That's... you. You don't have to make excuses. Yes, we get it. No, but actually, but actually, I just hate traveling in general. Like, I have a rule. Like, yeah. if I'm not going to spend at least 2x the time in a place that I'm going to spend traveling to get there, I refuse to go. Like, so That's if I'm going fair. somewhere that fly and I fly like for four hours, I have to be there at least eight hours to justify that trip because otherwise it's like, to me, I'm like, this is a waste of time. That That's very but, fair. Yeah. But the, that you'd be flying twice in one day, right? If you didn't spend eight hours there, that seems like, why would you fly there in that case? If you're just going to spend a couple of hours, is that, is that common in America? Well, like there's like often, like there's often offers to like do like podcasts, right? And they're like, come fly out oh, to right. LA or something to do it. I guess you're right yeah, that like I, I would technically spend a little bit of time in LA, but the actual reason I'm going to LA is for like a two hour podcast, right? So I'm, right. I'm functionally okay. getting two hours of value out of spending like who knows how many hours in a plane, like maybe six hours there and back, or I don't know how long it takes to fly there, but um, 
but yeah, to me, that like doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'd want to like instead find a bunch of things that I want to do before I actually decide to fly out to somewhere like that. Yeah. Do you, do you like to uh, maybe not travel, but do you like to go and see new places like holiday, I guess? Yeah. Like, like I like, um, uh, I mean, yeah, but like a lot of the places are pretty boring. Like I like going to the beach, but it's not like, oh. <laughs> you know, like the super beach. It's like the closest beach to me. Right. Or I like going yeah. to like some parks, but it's just like my neighborhood park is like cool to me. Um, I'm pretty, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm pretty like boring with this stuff. I don't, I don't really, uh, I think a lot You've of been like, scared into not exploring the world. No, these that's people not have got into you. completely fair. No, dude, when I was in college, like I did this like uh like I traveled to like Qatar and we like spent like a bunch of like a semester in the Middle East and That sounds it, cool. It was a really cool experience and like culturally enriching and eye-opening and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, you also realize like, oh, these are just places with buildings, food, and like, you know, just the same kind of stuff just slightly different. I don't know. So I, to me, I've always thought like, if you can be content and happy with where you're at and like with the stuff you are given, it's way better for you. I don't know if that makes sense. I, I mean, if you think about it, people fly to most people's cities to visit there, like as a trip, as this fun thing. And then those people in those cities fly to other cities. Like everyone's just trying to escape where they are because they aren't happy. <laughs> but if you can just be happy with where you're at, with like what you have, um, the grass is greener kind of thing yeah absolutely but the grass is always greener because it's full of shit never thought about it that way coffee. my outlook's changed i f i feel like all right so would you visit qatar again if you could just teleport there immediately yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I probably would though. Just to visit. Okay, well would then be it's cool. just a it says travel thing, it's a flight thing then. Yeah. That's what Yeah, that's what's and it's like it's like also like sure the, just the, so the time the time yeah. away from like you also I would have to find time in like my schedule. The the thing too, like I don't know how you, you guys feel about YouTube, but like, dude, it's such a fun job that I'm like I feel I'm pretty much a workaholic because I just love what yeah. I do. Yep. So it's like a lot of times I mean, I probably could like make myself take a vacation. Like that's what I'm sort of doing right now is I'm kind of forcing myself to spend a little time relaxing. But honestly, uh, like I can't wait to get back to it because it's this is sort of what I enjoy doing. So I don't know. I think but YouTube, uh, you don't have to go from do from home, right? You can do it anyway. You can do it in Qatar. Me, not so much. I mean, I got the $10 million studio. I can't go recreate that just anywhere. I it's not like I can just point. like throw up a green screen or something like that's. That's not how it works. So, Steve, yeah, you, you to, would probably relate to something I feel, and I'll bet Charlie kind of gets this itch too, where after a good while away from it, you just don't know what else to do with your time. So you just want to fill your time with it, you know? One, like with YouTube, like with like YouTube and yeah. all that kind of stuff? Yeah, with yeah, YouTube and like, creating stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's like what I've been fascinated to do forever. I wanted to do it for a job, then it became a job, and it's like now it's like, oh, that's sick. I like get to basically do my passion for for money it's like weird yeah uh, so yeah no it's it's great i honestly i would be doing this just um like if i won the lottery i'd probably get bored and end up doing it anyways like i don't think it's a matter of uh right. like i have to it's just like this is yeah you have to find something to fill your time with that's yeah i yeah, can like fair. i'll give you i'll give you a relevant example you know there will be times where weeks and weeks straight you'll just be working on stuff like it's just one after the other oh i finished this time to look at this so i'm tackling this thing and then you kind of have that moment that realization where you go maybe i'll take a break maybe i'll take it easy maybe i'll dedicate a day or a couple days to just fucking around playing games whatever but then that's so quickly just wears off and you go yeah, well hey wait i want to go back to doing this into your mind you don't want to let him in Taking yeah. you away from what matters most. Exactly. It's that motivation, that determination. You just can't let it go. But what I'm saying is even when you try to relax, even when you try to step away from it and just take a break, there's still always that itch, always that, oh, I'd rather be doing this. I'd rather be fucking around with this. You always need to ask yourself in moments of weakness like that, do you think Jesus <laughs> ever relaxed? And the answer is no. <laughs> That's true. He never did. Never That's once. That's true. He didn't have a lot of time. He had to get a lot done. Actually, I have a question for you guys. Like, I'm sorry if y'all are already closing it up. Uh, I, I agree. And I think that most of like what I'm trying to do this year actually specifically is achieve some level of like balance 
because I, I think that like whenever I'm tired of YouTube, it's mostly just because I don't take like small breaks. Mm -hmm. I don't need large breaks. I, I just need to like take a weekend off every once in a while. Um, so what do you, what is y'all's schedule, like your preferred rhythm of content where you feel like you're just in that pocket, you're not doing too much, you're not doing too little, like how much is it for you guys to hit that uh, sweet spot where you feel like rested, but also you're like fulfilled? Mine's going to be such a different answer because I don't have like a schedule. The shit I do is such a far cry from like what you do, Steven. Mine's like, yeah. wow, I just watched this really embarrassing thing from this guy doing some stupid shit on YouTube or whatever. And then I'll joke about it for like 15 minutes of just having fun. And I'm like, that was that was fun. And that's it. And then I'll go do something else. Like I'll go eat or go to the gym, go to a warehouse to hang out with friends or whatever. And then maybe I'll see something on the way like that's even goofier and be like, all right, I'll do that when I get home. <laughs> like my schedule is so flexible because the content I make isn't like the like the to be biggest fair, time investment. Yeah, to be fair, though, then you stream for like eight hours. And hours, then, yeah, so there yeah. Is, I do that every <laughs> night. Time investment yeah, there. your your content yeah. is that's very your, your content is very much your existence where it's just, oh, here's a yeah. thing I want to play. Here's a thing I found that's funny. It's not really constructed based around concepts. It's more just things that you want to do. Well, not often. Yeah, we do still do that, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah. But those those are a lot more planned, and those are right, easy yeah. to work around if you want. But it's like, but it's also not your stuff. norm. It's also yeah. not your norm. You would never be a YouTuber who goes a month without uploading something because you're working on a giant project. Right. Yeah. Um, so Steve, to answer your question, I think I work a bit more typically where you do, where I kind of have something I want to execute and you know, some idea or I want to focus on working something and crafting something and then putting it out and then going, okay, I'm done with this. I can move on. Um, I guess the schedule I adhere to is it's in bursts. Like I will work weeks straight and then three, four days straight, just not want to do anything. Um, oh uh, yeah. 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 And it, it goes with motivation. And my biggest rule that I always assign to myself is I never force it. So if I'm sitting down to work on something and I go, I have to do this. Oh, I don't feel like it. I'm fucking tired. Oh, I'm kind of bored with this. Oh, I'm just staring at it and it's autopiloting. I don't ever do that. So in the beginning, I used to have a terrible problem with that. It was like, oh, fuck, I have to make videos. I have to get big. I have to do all this shit. I can't stop. I have to do it. Um, and I realized that when you're motivated and really working or when you're just autopiloting and just going through the motions, it usually gets done at about the same time. Because when you're really invested and motivated and having fun, it gets done a lot quicker and it flows a lot more naturally. So my schedule is, you know, I just kind of make it my normal thing. But as soon as that inkling of just eh, this is whatever, not working, I just pause. And whenever I naturally feel like going back to it, I don't rush it, you know. That seems healthy. Yeah, that yeah. seems like the right the right move. I need to figure out how to do that. That's like my big goal for this year is I just always inevitably go from like, you know, I have a great rhythm of like, I go to the gym, I go, uh, I go like play some music and then I go work for like eight hours and I'll do that for like a couple months, but then something will happen or I'll get some idea for some big investigation. And then my life becomes like a hundred hours a week of just grinding. Every habit goes out the window. I haven't done my laundry in like two weeks. And then like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, just, it's just gr like sweaty grind mode. And that's always when I feel like, oh man, I should have just taken like five extra days to do this project and mm -hmm. then actually lived a regular life because that's way more sustainable than the way I do it. So I, yeah, I guess I just have to be more active about like thinking about it that way. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing either, though. When you find something so enticing and so passionate that it's like, oh, OK, I'm going to wake up, work on this All and then go to bed. That's it. That's my whole day. Um, a tip that I have found that helps me a lot to keep that in perspective is once you drop something like that, once you're finally done, just completely walk away for a while. Like, don't don't stare at comments. Don't stare at numbers don't keep like tweaking it after it's finished just let it go go outside go on a trip go do something distract yourself so you can finally say i'm done i'm chopping that block off i'm going back to being a normal human being and taking a breath it's kind of hard in his situation though when there's a lot of responses that come from his investigations and 
you know, follow-ups and such, I imagine. I, I, I was going to say, say with the Logan yeah. Paul stuff, I, wa- I was, like, planning to take, like, a week off. Then this, like, billionaire person contacts me, and so then, like, my, that week gets ruined. And then the <laughs> next week, like, Logan responds. So that week gets ruined. And then I'm, like, going to respond. And then he calls me, and he, like, apologizes. So then that response gets ruined. So now I'm, like, just, like, I've w- basically been in waiting mode for, like, three weeks while also not being able to actually relax. Right. So, like, there is this weird thing. Well, until now. Today. Today was today and the last couple of days I've been actually trying to like legit like check out. But. Right. Well, the thing is, you're only human. You know, you can't operate on this like a machine. You can't just do this 24 seven, always go mode 100 percent. And you're luckily in a position where your content and quality is very, very good. So you have an audience that I think no matter how long you take on something will watch it. I know you like to be kind of topical and going around with what's going around, and you're also very good at that, but I don't think your audience is ever gonna mind if you say, hey guys, I'm gonna take an extra week to crank this out because I really wanna put everything in it, you know? So you kinda gotta just keep that in perspective in the back of your head. This whole business we're in, all of us from top to bottom, is very, very constant 24 seven competitive, right? It's just nonstop, always go, always someone doing what you're not doing. But it's okay to realize and take a breath and say, no, I do have an audience that wants me specifically. So I'm going to make sure that I give them what I am proud of rather than just what they're expecting and waiting for. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Good good answer. I'm applauding. Yeah, that's that's great. I actually no, thank you. Thank you for the advice. That's actually really, really like good advice. Of course. And uh, yeah, I think I needed to hear it. So yeah, Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Comes with the turf. Well, that was a fun little intervention for coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for, uh, you're killing yourself, Coffeezilla. <laughs> you need to slow down a bit. Take it easy. Um, yeah. All right. So let's let's wrap there. This has been a good episode. We, mm-hmm. we hit a, on a lot of topics. It was very interesting. Thank you for coming on and educating us, uh, Stephen. Yes. It was a- absolute pleasure having you on. Please shout out uh, where people can find you and where they can go to watch the Logan Paul stuff and everything else we've talked about. Yeah, thanks for having me. YouTube channel, CoffeeZilla. Uh, yeah, that's basically the main place you can find me. Thanks. Yeah, thank awesome. you for coming. Go check him out. All right. yeah, Dude, thank you. Huge honor, guys. Been watching for a while. So uh, yeah, big fan. I didn't want to miss it. Oh, I appreciate yeah. you coming on. It's been yeah. awesome. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for everyone at home for tuning in and watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to watch bonus episodes, we have a Patreon at patreon.com slash the official podcast. Bonus episode, bonus content there. Otherwise, uh, like we just said, go check out Coffee. His content is great. Um, yeah, that's that's it for this week. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.